live in five, four, three, two, one. Greetings once again in that name that is above every name. We welcome all of our viewers. We welcome SMZ, uh, Philadelphia and vicinity. We are. And how wonderful it is on this wonderful Wednesday evening as we come together to share and to study the Word of God as we continue our study in the book of Acts, as we continue to see the development of the church and God's plan for the church as God has laid out in his word for us. So we welcome all of our viewers from wherever you are. How blessed we are. How wonderful it is. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Bow with me for a moment of prayer. God, we thank you now for another opportunity. We thank you for this privilege that you have blessed us to see the breaking of a brand new day and you have allowed us to participate in the wonderful works of your hand, of your hand this day. So we ask your blessings upon each and every one, every one of the listeners and the hearers, and that we would be not only hearers of your word, but we would apply the word to our daily lives, and we would be doers and then seek to live thereby. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. We are so delighted. We are so delighted. My uh, video has been interrupted. Is that true? Yeah, keep going. I think you got audio, but video, no video. Amen. And so we are delighted. We are delighted to have all of those persons who are sharing with us tonight. And uh, uh, I, I want to welcome all of those folk who are with us. And uh, we're having some uh, temporary technical difficulties and uh and, and we we'll, we and then we'll be able to welcome all of those persons who are sharing with us amen are you working is he working on our video yeah keep going all right all right uh we welcome tonight we welcome tonight uh uh let's see i wonder if i should uh oh yeah, 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 my audio is working. Yeah. We welcome, I can't see everybody because uh, some folk have already tuned on er, in earlier, but we are delighted to have our Georgia connection, uh, Sister Susie Roberts. We're delighted uh, to have our Statesboro, Georgia connection, Sister Frankie Eason, a man. We're uh, delighted to have Sister Tia Kennelly with us tonight. Welcome. Uh, Sister Peggy Haley, welcome. Sister Dawn Beasley, welcome. Sister Gail Small, welcome. Minister Wilhelmina Haskins, Deacon Haskins, amen. Uh, we're still working on the video, and uh, uh, hopefully it will be up in momentarily, and then I can see the other persons who have joined on. But let me just say, for now, welcome everybody. Lottie, Dottie, and everybody, if you are tuned in and if you are listening, uh, we are delighted that you could tune in and, sh and, sh and share with us uh, tonight. And uh, uh, I'm wondering if, if I should start my, uh, Deacon Simpson, if I should start my video all over again. It's good, it's good. It's, it's good. good. Just back out of Facebook and go back in. Oh, okay. That's what I was hoping. All right. Let's see. 
Oh. Uh, we're going to have, we, 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 we're going to be up in a minute. Amen. And we are, amen. I think we are ready. I think we are ready now. All right. All right. All right, welcome, Sister Diane Curtis is with us. Welcome, Sister, Sister Tiffany, Minister Tiffany D. Curtis. Welcome, Deacon Moore. Welcome, Sister Valerie Mann. And uh, we lost some of the names, and so we are going to get started in our lesson tonight. And uh, as we continue our walk through Acts, and uh, we see the development of the first century uh, church, and and those are, we see some exciting things, and, and we saw on Sunday, I said that we were, last week we were taking the gospel into Africa. We already took the gospel into Africa. We did that on Sunday in chapter 8, when Philip witnessed to the eunuch from Ethiopia, and he, they went on their way rejoicing, and he went on back to Africa, and, uh... Philip went on doing about, about his ministry, and tonight we uh, come up to chapter, chapter 9, and uh, there is a new character that's going to be introduced. In fact, about it, he's already been introduced, uh, Saul, who will become Paul. He was introduced in chapter 7 because he held the coat for all of those who stoned Stephen. That's right. And so he's already been introduced, and, and Luke, Luke does a marvelous job in setting this up and setting the characters up and, and uh, getting us prepared for the next movement. And so we saw the movement and the development of the apostles. We saw... Uh, their ministry, and we moved from the apostles to the successors of the apostles, which were the seven deacons. And now as we end up with uh, the last of the two deacons, that the most prominent ones and the most prominent of the seven deacons was Stephen and Philip. Stephen had been martyred, and you, if you remember, now, it was Saul who held the coat for uh, those who stoned Stephen. And uh, when we get to chapter 9, uh, Saul took it upon himself, uh, took it upon himself to com continue, continue to persecute the church. He was a church persecutor. Then look at verse 1. Then then Saul, still breathing threatens and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the priest and asked letters from him to the synagogue of Damascus so that if he found any who were of the way. Now, the King James might say this uh, way, but when you look at uh, when you look at when you look at the New King James version, it says the way. And and let me just stop. Let me just stop right here for a moment and say that the uh, people in the first century church they were not called Christians at first. They were called people of the way. They were not called Christians, but they were called people of the way. And, and there were several names that, were, that the believers were called by, but they were, they were never called Christians. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. They, they were never called Christians by each other. And we'll we, we, we find that out in another chapter, in chapter 10, when we get to chapter 10, when they were first called Christians and why they were called Christians. But the first century church, the believers were called the people of the way. Yeah. They, they were called disciples. 
They were called believers. They were called saints. They were called brethren, but they were never called Christians. Stick a pen in that. Yeah. They were called people of the way. People of the way. People of the way. People of the way of Jesus Christ. Uh, let, let me get uh, John chapter 14 and verse 6. And uh, Deacon Simpson is going to read uh, uh, John chapter 6 and verse, verse John chapter 14 and verse 6. Uh, uh, they were called people of the way. Right. Watch this. Watch this now. The, this familiar verse, you know it by heart. John chapter 14, verse 6. Listen. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him and have seen me. All right, all right. They were, they were called people of the way. The way Jesus says, I am what? The way. He did not say, I am a way or, 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 or many ways, but I am the only way. Listen, as of the only way. Jesus is the only way to the Father. He is the only way. And so the first thing that we need to look at is that, that, that uh, being a witness, it is the conviction that in Christianity we have the only road to God. There is no other way. These people in the first century church they were called people of the way. They were not called Christians. Christians were not, and when we get to chapter 10, let me run ahead of myself a little bit. When we get to chapter 10, you will discover that the word Christian was not a name of endearment, but it was meant to put them down. It was meant to mark them because they, the believers were acting like Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ says that I am the way. I am the way. I am the only way. Let not your heart be troubled for I am the way, the truth, and the life, says John, John, John 14, verse 6. Jesus is the way. He is the only way. He is the only way to God, but not only is he the way, not only is he the way, he, he the way but in that one verse, we also see another principle there. Another principle is that in Christianity, we have a path of conduct and practical life already traced out for us. We have a conduct, and that's why they were called Christians, because they were reminding the folk of Christ himself, and they called him Christ, they called them Christ-like, so they called them Christians, just like uh, those folk who now when I go home, they call me a Philadelphian, even though I am from Georgia, but I've spent more years in Philadelphia than I've spent in Georgia. So they say, you are a Philadelphian. Uh -huh. And so they call, they call uh, the Christians Christ-like, and so they call them Christians. And so that means that they were of the way of Jesus Christ. And now my sp now spirit-filled person, I ask you tonight, what do folk call you? Are you reminding them of Jesus of the way of Jesus Christ? Listen to the way of Jesus Christ. If a man smite thee on the one cheek, turn the other cheek. Listen to the listen to the way of Jesus Christ. How can you say, "Behold the mote in your brother's eye" when there's a whole beam in your eye? Listen, listen to the way of Jesus Christ, Father. 
Forgive them for they know not what they do. Listen to the way of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, if a man does you ask, does you harm, you do him good. That is the way of Jesus Christ. And that's why they were called people of the way. And Paul, or Saul rather, wanted to stamp out the people of the way. Everybody who reminded him of Jesus Christ and that way he wanted to stamp out Christianity. And as he journeyed, listen, look at the text, near Damascus, and suddenly a light shined around from heaven. Paul has a heavenly vision and the light was so bright, it was brighter than the noonday sun, and it knocked him to the ground, and he heard voices, and he heard the voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, verse 4, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? It's not a Lord of conviction, but based on his experience and his reading of Scripture, he knows that he is no longer in control, and he tell, and he calls the voice. He doesn't really know who it is right now, but he knew it knows that it's somebody important that has more power than he does. And so he says, Lord, who are you? And then the Lord says, I am Jesus. Jesus identifies himself. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the pricks, the goads. I am Jesus whom you persecuted. Let, let me just drop something on you, my brothers and my sisters. Every time you persecute a child of God, you are really persecuting the church. Huh. Hmm. Every time you run the preacher down, run the deacons down, run the members down, you are persecuting the church, and it's hard to kick against the pricks. Let me let me see if I can explain it. Back in the day, back in the day when we were, you know, you know, when we were herding cattle, Woman? they they had a they had uh, in Wilbur's day they had a sharp stick. Listen, Wilbur. And they would and and as and and as we would be driving the animals and the animals would begin to kick, they would hit them with that sharp instrument. And, and it would force them to go in the direction that we wanted them to go. But in my day, when I came along, they had what they call a hot stick. A hot stick. They had an electric stick with two probes on the end, yeah. and they would just touch them with that stick, and it would shock them and make them go in that direction. Yeah. God shocked Saul yeah, shock. and knocked him down to the ground, and he says, Lord, what would you have me, uh, 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 what would you have me to do? And uh, listen, listen, verse 6. So he trembled and astonished and said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And when the Lord said to him, arise, go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. You must, you will be told what you must do. And, and, and isn't it strange that folks say what the Lord told them to do, but yet they can stop doing what the Lord told them to do? Ah. When there is a divine call, you must do it. Must do it. Must do it. The men, the men, verse 7, the men that journeyed with him, they stood speechless, they hearing a voice but seeing no one. Seeing no one. Saul, Saul arose from the ground and went, and his eyes were blinded. His eyes were open and saw no one. He was blinded, but they led him by his hand. Here, here is uh, the persecuted, now has been arrested, and uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The big and powerful now become powerless. Ah. Uh. He had letters, from, he thought he was, he was somebody, and he had a lot of zeal trying to stamp out Christianity. And, and how often it is that folk have a lot of zeal when they try to stop the Lord's work. They have a lot of zeal when they go against God 
and they are kicking against the pricks and they can't win. The big and the powerful now has become powerless. And he was three days without sight and neither ate nor drank. He could eat nor drink because now he is getting ready for his new way of life. He's getting ready to come, become one of the people of the way. And let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, let me run ahead of myself a little bit. Every time you become one of the people of the way, you're going to upset some of your former friends. Uh, I tell you about the brother. No. Nope. The brother who uh, submitted unto the Lord and submitted to pastoral authority. They start making fun at him, and they said, "Yeah, you won't. You're gonna be one of Moore's boys uh, because uh, you are. You are a yes man." Uh -oh. Well, what are you, a no person? You, 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 one of his boys, I can tell because you are a yes man. He used to be one of them, but now he submits to pastoral authority and biblical authority, and now it upsets his friends, and now he's persecuted for doing the right thing. I'm Y'all not going to talk to me. Uh, listen what the voice says. The voice says, Now therefore, verse 10, Now therefore, now there was a certain disciple of Damascus. It wasn't a Christian. They didn't call him a Christian. They called him a disciple. The, a Christian, you, you know, Christian really means that you're acting just like Jesus. That you are being Christ-like in your attitude. You, you know what you know what Paul uh, the, the same brother here says about attitude let this mind let this kind of attitude be in you that was also in Christ Jesus the disciples had the attitude of Jesus Christ amen he says and there was a disciple named Ananias and uh, and to him the Lord said in a vision Ananias and he said here am I and that's a good word always when the Lord called, Lord, here am I. That, that was a call of most of the prophets. That was the call of Isaiah, Lord, here am I. That was the call of young, uh, young, young Samuel when, when uh, Eli told Samuel, the next time you hear the voice, say, Lord, speak. In other words, in other, in other words, in other words, if God's going to use you, he got to speak to you directly. He ain't going to speak to you through somebody else. Uh -huh. But he's going to speak directly. Somebody else can, can guide you into hearing and listening. Eli says to Samuel, the next time you hear the voice, say, speak, Lord. Speak. I think there's somebody here tonight need to say, speak, Lord. And the Lord will speak to you through scripture. We looked at chapter 8. When Philip always used the scripture, the, Luke always emphasized the scripture because that is the way that God speaks today through the Holy Ghost and in his word. Right. Ain't nothing going to hit you, no boat going to hit you from heaven and something hit me in the head, crown of my head, went all the way down to the meat. No, it ain't going to be something. It's going to be the word of God. God spoke like that before the canon was complete. But in these last days, says the writer of the Hebrew, God has spoken to us through by his son, and his son is the word. Listen to Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the light. And I told you on Sunday that all scripture Scripture points toward Jesus Christ. And so the next time that you hear the voice and you think that the Lord is talking to you, just say, speak, Lord. Speak. And God, and, and, and God will speak to you. And, 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 and he arose and went to the street called Straight and inquired in the house of Judas, so called Saul of Tarsha. For behold, he, 
He is a praying man. God says to Ananias that Saul is a praying man. He's a praying man. And we're going to see what a praying man is in a minute. And in the vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him so that he might receive his sight. In other words, salvation and calls are always confirmed within the congregation. Within, within. If you've been called, somebody else knew it besides you. Sometimes some folks say they've been called and don't nobody know it but them. But if you've been called, it, it's always confirmed within the congregation. And I and I answered, Lord, I have heard about this fellow. Yeah, I've heard. How much harm he has done to the saints, saints. saints. in Jerusalem, not to the Christians. Saints. saints. God calls us by what we will become and not what we are. Saints. We are not saints yet, but since God is so good at what he does, if he starts the process, he can complete it. I will become a saint. And so God just goes ahead and calls me by what I will become and not what I am. He doesn't call me the rascal that I really am. He doesn't call me that the mean person that I really am, but he encouraged me by calling me saints because that's what you are already in the process and that's what you will ultimately become. But if you start, if you start looking at the goal, the goal is sainthood, but the process, but there's a process that I gotta go through. And if you and if you start focusing on the goal, you won't become you will become no earthly good. No earthly good. Some folk are so heavenly minded because they, they can only see themselves as a saint rather than going through the process. Yeah, 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 there's there's, there's, there's a process. Uh, and he says I've I seen how much harm he'd done to the saints at, uh, at Damascus. And the, verse 14, and there was, and there he had the authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord says, go for he is a chosen vessel of mine. He's a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name. The who? Among Gentiles, yeah, 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 Gentile kings uh -huh. and children of Israel. Look, God done reversed the order here, y'all. Uh -huh. All before it was Jerusalem first. Yeah. Now Jerusalem is last because now you see the expansion of the gospel going internationally. internationally. All before it was urban and suburban. Start in Jerusalem, Judea, and then the uttermost parts of the world. But now it's the uttermost parts of the world and then Jerusalem. Because Jerusalem has already had a chance and they have heard as much of the gospel as they can. And now God is going to the uttermost parts of the world. We see the outline now. We, we see the outline is reversed. He is, he is a chosen vessel to bear my name among Gentile kings, of the uh, and of the children of Israel, and watch this, for I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Must suffer. Must suffer. Stick a pen in. Must suffer, because because that's divine necessity. Like Jesus said, I must go through Samaria. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus intends to bless the whole world. And now we see God's plan unfolding. 
God's plan unfolding, not just Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, but now we see the uttermost parts of the earth. Uh, Deacon Simpson is going to get me Genesis chapter 12 and verse 3. Uh, and I want to show you God's plan. Don't you think that you were an afterthought? God had you in his plan from the beginning. God had you from in mind when he started the Christian movement. Uh -huh. Listen. Genesis 12, 3. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that cursed thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. He says, in you, Abraham, I'm starting something. This is the starting point, y'all. The starting point of faith. He says, this is when Abraham entered the school of faith. And he says, and in you shall all all of the families of the earth be blessed to, uh, to the uttermost parts of the world from around the world. God's intention was to bless the whole world in the beginning. And now in the first century church, in the church, not in Judaism, but in the church, we see God's plan began to unfold. Listen, he says to Saul that you are a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles. It's Gentiles that's across the country and around the world. For our kings and the children of Israel. For I will show you how much things you must suffer for my name. Suffering goes along with, if, with your identity with Jesus Christ. If Jesus had to pray, oh, what about me? If Jesus had to suffer, oh, what about me? Me, he suffered for me. He suffered for us out on a hill called Calvary. You remember that, that the eunuch was reading from the prophet Isaiah that he was wounded for our transgressions and by his stripes we are healed. He suffered for us. How much suffering are you willing to do, spirit-filled person? You are not even willing to suffer a little shame for Jesus' uh -huh. sake. And Ananias, verse 17, went his way and entered, entered the house and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, brother, he's called brother. Brother. Not Christian. Brother. See, we, 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 the goal is Christian. Let me see, let me see. The goal is Christian. Because when, the, when Jesus gets ready to present us for the Father, we're going to be just like him. Because the Bible says, does say, and, and, and when he comes, we shall be like him. That's the goal. But the process, uh, saints, brethren, disciple, meaning that you are believer, Meaning that you are a learner and you got to go through, you got to go through something to become a Christian. Ah, listen. Saul will suffer the same thing that Jesus suffered and the apostles suffered and that the seven suffered. You can't get out of Christianity without suffering. But we don't like suffering. And we don't like pain, but it's a it's a it's a necessary it's a necessary thing for us because it helps to shape us and to mold us in the way of Jesus Christ. And Ananias went his way and entered the house, laying hands on him, said, "Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came and sent uh, uh, and has sent me." that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, to be healed here is a confirmation, and to receive his sight is a confirmation of his salvation. And immediately there fell from his eyes 
some, something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. Uh -huh. So when he had received food, he was strengthened. Then Saul spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. Verse 20 says, Verse 20 says, Immediately he preached the, the Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. Then all who heard him were amazed and said, Is this not he who destroyed those who called on the name in Jerusalem? Wait a minute. Didn't we just hear him the other day destroy folk who called on the name of Jesus in Jerusalem? But now, less than six days away, here we are. Wait a minute. There's something, something strange about this. Watch as, watch as the text unfold. And has come here for that purpose so that he might bring them bound to the chief priest. But Saul increased all the more in strength and confound the Jews who dwelt in Damascus, proving that this Jesus is the Christ. What better person to preach to a Jew than a Jew? He knows their law. He knows their habits. He knows how to push their buttons. And he was pushing their buttons, and they got upset with him. And uh, he had to escape from them. Look at verse 23. Now, after many days were passed, the Jews plotted to kill him. Here's his colleagues who have turned against him now because he met the resurrected, risen Lord. And, and I like the way Luke set this thing up. I like the way Luke set this up. But if, if you're not careful, you will think that immediately after his conversion that he started preaching. Uh-huh. But if you got a if you got one of those Reese's chronological Bibles, yeah. you will discover that something else happened between verse 19 and verse 20. That's right. And uh, and and anybody doubt that, I'm going to uh, uh, look at Galatians chapter one, verse 11 through 17, and you're going to see what happens between verses 19 and 20. Yeah. Watch this. Yeah, I'm waiting for you. Oh, you thought I was getting it? Galatians chapter 1, starting at 11. Yes. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For ye have heard my conversation in time past, the Jewish, the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God uh -huh. and wasted it and profited in the Jewish religion above many my equal in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my father. Uh -huh. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's rule, listen, listen, and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathens. Immediately, I conferred not with flesh and blood. Listen, listen close now. Immediately. Neither went, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. But I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. After Paul's conversion... Immediately, he went 
to the Arabian Desert for the next three years in seminary with Jesus as the professor. For three years he spent in Arabia getting it right in his mind. Arabia. Yeah. He said, I didn't go to Jerusalem. I did not confer with the other apostles because now in this text, Barnabas is hooking him up with the apostles, but he says, I didn't refer, I didn't confer with the apostles. I went to Arabia for the next three years right. so and studied systematic theology in the Arabian Desert. That's systematically. He had to get it systematically. He had to get it methodically. Yeah. And he had to get it in order because he didn't want to do like the rest of his colleagues, just spousing off stuff and picking stuff from here and here and trying to make the Bible mean what I mean. That's how come you take some time to study and you got to do this stuff systematically. You, you, can, you can't be in a hurry to get it because you can't get it in a hurry. Even Paul, with all of his, his academia and all of his sophistication, yeah. he had to go to the Arabian Desert and spend three years alone with the Lord so he could process this stuff right in his mind and he could get it right. And he was a powerful preacher when he got it right because he had all of the makings of a powerful preacher and God was dealing with him even when he did not know God was dealing with him. And now that God's called him, he's got to separate from his colleagues. Uh, separate. Every true call to the gospel of Jesus Christ calls for a separation. Separation. Abraham had to separate from his father. Moses had to separate from his culture down in Egypt. He spent 40 years in seminary, seminary uh, uh, in, in, in the, on the backside of the desert of Horeb, uh, right. minding the sheep in his part time. But the rest of the time he was studying with the Lord. He had to be separated. Joseph, Joseph, when God called him, he had to be separated. Paul had to be separated so the Lord could deal with him and so he could hear nobody's voice but the Lord. Uh -huh. When I was called to the Second Mount Zion Church some 35 years ago, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, we have a close-knit family, and, and some of the family members, they express, express ideas about coming and supporting me. Well, I said, uh, let, 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 let me be there for at least seven years. Seven. Let me, let me be at Second Mount Zion uh, without any other more for at least seven years because I had to separate from family ideology and, and family tradition to hear what the Lord has to say and to see what God would do before others who could influence me before they could come aboard. Every true call is a call to separation. God separated him he says, and, and that's how come you, you have to study the word of God and know that the Bible is in order but not chronological. That's right. And, uh, and, and there is a Bible. Uh, it's called the Rhesus Chronological uh, Bible. You can read it and you can see what happened in between verses 19 and verse 20 that Paul spent three years in the Arabian desert alone with the Lord. Then he came back to Damascus, and now he's a powerful preacher. That's right. And immediately he preached Christ in their synagogues that he is the Son of God. And then all who heard him were amazed and said, Is this not he who destroys those who call on the name in Jerusalem? But now, for this purpose... But, saw, but the Bible says, Luke says, verse 22, but Paul increased all the more in strength and confound the Jews who dwelt in Damascus, proving that Jesus Christ is, Jesus is the Christ. Now, after many days were passed, 
the Jews plotted to kill him. They plotted to kill him. Yeah. And folk, they, they're, they, they're not so much today is to shoot you with a gun, a knife, but they will kill your character. They'll try and kill your character. They'll try and kill your influence. And that's how come you got to be sure of your call and know what the Lord has called you for because persecution and suffering is a part of the Jesus movement. Listen to what he says to Saul. I'll show you what things you must suffer. And, uh, and I'm going to give you the program and the outline that you are to take. You are to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. God reversed the order because the gospel is going internationally now. In other words, and like I like to put it, the gospel is going globally around the world. Amen. Ah, when they plotted to kill him, but their plot became known to Saul. God always, listen to this, God always has a, has a way of letting his man know when danger is lurking. It's right here in text. But their plot became known to Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to yes. kill him. Then the Christians at the mass, I mean the, the, the disciples, right. It not does yet. not say Christians, y'all. Oh, we're not Christians yet. Then the disciples took him by night and let him down through the wall in a large basket. And when Saul had come to Jerusalem and tried to join the disciples, but they were afraid of him and did not believe that he was a disciple. Does that sound like anybody today? Look out, Reverend. Does that sound like anybody today? Somebody gets saved, person that you used to know, you say, I don't believe that. But yet the Lord could save you, but you don't believe somebody else could save. They didn't believe that that was the same person. Yeah. Here he is, here he is preaching the gospel. Uh, the persecutor has become the persecuted. Uh -huh. Did you hear me? I think I'll say that again. The persecutor has become the persecuted. And then I hear Jacob says, uh, 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 you got to be careful what you sow because what you sow uh, what, you got to be careful what you sow because that what you sow that's what you also reap yeah. Jacob sold a lie sold one lie to his daddy yeah, that's right. and reaped ten lies from his uncle Laban uncle Laban you, go, you got to reap what you sow he sold a lot of seeds and persecuted the church, and now he has become the persecuted. Ah, but Barnabas, Barnabas, there it is, that faithful yeah. Barnabas, Barnabas, took him and brought him to the apostles, because Barnabas had a good reputation. The Bible said he was a good man. Doesn't say that about a whole lot of folk. And he declared to him how he had seen the Lord on the road and, and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at the masters in the name of Jesus. It was Barnabas. Barnabas had to put him together with the apostles. Yeah. They wouldn't have, they, with the disciples, they wouldn't have accepted him in the first place right. if, uh, if he had gone up to Jerusalem talking about I'm, pre I'm preaching now, I'm Reverend, I'm, I'm Re I'm Reverend Saul. They would have they kicked him out. Yes, sir. So, so he was with them in Jerusalem, coming in and going out. And he spoke boldly in the name of Jesus Christ and disputed against the Hellenists, but they attempted to kill him. They could not dispute his word because he knew the word. He knew the word. He just didn't know the message. Ah. See, you can know the word, the letter of the word, but the spirit of the word is Jesus Christ. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, and, uh, but 
But they attempted to kill him. Then the brethren found out. They sought him. They brought him down to Caesarea and sent him out to Tarshish. They sent him to his own yes. hometown. Yes, the Amen. And verse 31, watch this. And the church throughout all Judea, all. Samaria, Galilee, and Samaria had peace and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, uh, they were multiplied. You know why? Yeah. You, you know why spirit-filled person? Why? You know why the church rested? I think the King James says, and, and the church rested. Rested. You know why they arrested? Why is that, Reverend? Because the persecutor been arrested. Ah. The one who was uh, 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 wreaking havoc in the church, he was arrested. arrested. That's how come the church enjoyed such peace. Saul has been arrested. Saul. And has, is no longer a persecutor, but he's being persecuted. And so the church rested because the one who was wreaking havoc in the church had been arrested. Jesus arrested him. And that's how come you ain't got to hurry up and get somebody, get nobody back? Because guess what? God is still in control. And that verse is still there in, in Matthew's gospel that, 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 that uh, upon this rock, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And uh, they had peace and were edified. And that word edify means to build up. It means that they were building themselves, not just in numbers, but they were building themselves spiritually and they were building their character in the Lord. They, they were becoming a strong church in fear of the Lord, not, not fearing the Lord like the Lord was going to do something to her, but a kind of reverential fear. Where, see, when you fear the Lord, the fear of the Lord is to recognize his presence in every situation. Yeah. That's the fear of the Lord. You remember Joseph who feared the Lord? He said, I'm not afraid of your husband, right. and I'm not afraid of you, but I can't do this wickedness because of the Lord. And how often it is, we say we fear the Lord, but you get us behind closed doors, and we act like other folk, not people of the way. Not people of the way of Jesus Christ. You know, a few years ago, we came out with that phrase, WWW, and everybody was right, wearing it around their necks. Oh, I, oh, how I wish that we could bring that phrase back today and really mean it. What, when we get in certain situations, we ask ourselves the questions, what would Jesus do? Yeah. That's what it meant when it says the fear of the Lord. It's not that I'm afraid of him, but what would Jesus do in this situation? And then you got to recognize the presence of the Lord in every situation. And the church were multiplied. The church always multiplied under persecution. Now it came, came to pass. Now we're introduced. We're introduced to another. We, we're reintroduced to an old character, who by the name of Peter, because Peter's going to play a part here. Now it came to pass, as Peter went through all the parts of the country, that he also came down to the saints who dwelt in Lydia. The saints. Not Christians. Right. The saints. God calls us not by what we are, but by who we will become. The goal is sainthood. There he found certain man named Aeneas who 
had been bedridden eight years and was paralyzed. And Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ, uh, Jesus the Christ, heal you. Rise and make your bed and, and uh, make your bed. Then he arose immediately. So all who dwelt in Lydia and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. God always used miracles and signs to draw attention to folk. But the, but the ultimate uh, end of the miracle and the signs is the word of the Lord. He used the healing of the man to show folk who Jesus really is, the Son of God, and that he still has power, and to draw them in. And uh, I, I, next week we'll start at, we'll start at, at, at uh, verse 36, because 36 is really a part of, of 10, because uh, we will begin uh, to deal with Peter again. Peter's going to have a short another episode, and then we're going to transition from Peter uh, to Paul, or Saul of Tarsus, and then, then Peter will complete the rest or most of the New Testament. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so very much. Dick Simpson is going to come and close us out, and uh, we'll see you on Sunday at uh, 10 o'clock. We'll see you there. Amen. Certainly we want to thank Pastor Moore uh, for that word of encouragement, that lesson, that Bible study tonight. Uh, I hope that we are encouraged, encouraged by what we have heard and what we have read. Amen. Um, so before we go into prayer, I just want to ask or solicit your prayers for uh, Deacon Mike Signor, who's just going through some things right now, so we ask uh, you to keep him in prayer. Amen. Bow with me now as we close out. Our Father and our God, we come now, Lord, to say thank you. We thank you now, Lord, for what you have given us. We thank you for the provisions that you have made for us all throughout the week. We thank you for the provisions of food. We thank you for the provisions of shelter. We thank you for the provisions of family now, Lord. So now, Lord, as we continue in this journey, we pray that you will continue to strengthen us and guide us for the journey. We pray, O oh Lord, now that all those who are abiding under my humble voice, Lord, that they would, they would heed your call, that they would hear something from your word that would be comfort and meet to their soul, O oh Lord. We pray for those who are distressed, O oh Lord, who are going through uh, the issues of life, uh, through this newness, we pray, O oh Lord, that you would help them to make the adjustment. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would help their families and help everyone around them to stabilize any situation that is that is that is hurtful, that is not becoming, O oh Lord. So, Father God, we ask your continued blessings, O oh Lord. We ask your continued blessings upon our pastor as he continues to guide us and lead us, O oh Lord, as we emerge from this pandemic situation, as we move into the newness of what we are, O oh Lord. We ask that your continued blessings, O oh Lord. We pray your continued blessings upon our congregants, O oh Lord, as we gather on video but not in person, O oh Lord. For we look forward to the day when we can all get together, O oh Lord, and worship next to one another again, O oh Lord. So, Father God, continue to strengthen and guide us as we continue to walk this pilgrim's way, O oh Lord. Have thy way as we prepare to depart from your depart from this place or from this screen, but not your presence, O oh Lord. Keep us until we meet again, O oh Lord. These and all the things we ask in your son, Christ Jesus, we say amen, 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 and amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. God bless you.